Thank you, Angela, uh, for the opportunity uh, to speak this afternoon. Um, I will first would like to apologize for any redundancies with the beginning of my presentations with what you just saw from uh, Dr. Champ and the excellent presentations we saw earlier uh, in the conference. Uh, but I would like to speak uh, briefly on the specific aspects of cancer metabolism that have shown efficacy in, in targeting, um, especially looking at exploiting oxidative stress as a therapeutic strategy. And as an extension of that, uh, present some of the work from my dissertation project in which I'm evaluating a co therapeutic combination of dichloroacetate and metformin as a potential uh, anti-cancer therapy. Um, so as has been discussed ex extensively, uh, many cancers exhibit a metabolic phenotype uh, that's character characterized by the preferential uh, use of glucose as the hexose substrate for glycolytic metabolism and the generation of pyruvate, uh, which in normal non in, uh, quiescent cells is generally transported into the mitochondria for further metabolism, generation of acetyl-CoA for the TCA cycle. However, in cancer, uh, the pyruvate is predominantly generated or converted to lactate, exported rapidly from the cell and causes an acidification of the microenvironment. Specifically, uh, Dr. Uh, the D D Berardinus group at UT Southwestern showed in a model of glioblastoma that up to 85% of pyruvate is actually converted to lactate and only about 5% actually makes it into the mitochondria. The remaining fraction of uh, glucose carbon doesn't often make it uh, into py to pyruvate. Rather, it is uh, shuttled off into biosynthetic branches from glycolysis uh, for instance, glucose 6-phosphate enters the pyruvate uh, or the pentose phosphate pathway for the generation of ribose used in nucleotide synthesis uh, along, correspond or along with the generation of NADPH. 3-phosphoglycerate uh, is the primary substrate for serine and glycine synth biosynthesis, which is uh, essential for the generation of glutathione uh, as well as adds to nucleotide synthesis. Um, this increase in uh, Biosynthetic metabolism seen in cancer is mediated uh, in part by uh, the expression of the M2 isoform of pyruvate kinase, which unlike the M1 isoform is subject to tyrosine phosphorylation, which inhibits uh, its efficiency and leads to a buildup of glycolytic intermediates upstream of, of the enzyme. Uh, with the accumulation of knowledge uh, in regards to cancer metabolism has, become, has come with great interest in identifying potential uh, small molecule inhibitors for the various um, enzymes within these pathways, uh, including the, oops, me, um, the traditional glycolytic inhibitors 2-deoxyglucose and 3-bromopyruvate, as well as other uh, experimental agents such as WZB117, uh, which is a GLUT1 inhibitor and shows efficacy in reducing uh, tumor growth, uh, both in vitro and in vivo, um, through the reduction of glucose uptake. Um, AstraZeneca is uh, studying a molecule, uh, AZD 3965. It's a MCT1 inhibitor um, and is shown to uh, inhibit tumor growth through the uh, inhibiting um, lactate uh, export from the cell. Additionally, Agios Pharmaceuticals are currently uh, research, researching two uh, separate compounds that inhibit two isoforms of mutant uh, isocitrate dehydrogenase. Um, they're currently recruiting for three separate clinical trials. Um, these inhibitors show a remarkable uh, efficacy in reducing um, circulating levels of 2-HG uh, which is the oncometabolite that was mentioned earlier in the conference. Additionally, Nimbus Therapeutics is interested in an uh, experimental compound, ND646, uh, which Ruben Shaw at the Salk Institute is currently investigating. It is an ACC inhibitor um, and has shown efficacy in reducing tumor growth uh, due to an inhibition of uh, fatty acid synthesis. Um, Another in, uh, incredible hallmark, hallmark of cancer metabolism is the inherent increased basal production of reactive oxygen species. Uh, this enhanced ROS is shown or promotes genomic instability 
is in, involved in signaling, uh, specifically hydrogen peroxide, uh, activates the MAP kinase pathway inhib and inhibits P10 through protein oxidation. Um, and it also is involved in invasion and metastasis as matrix metalloproteases are activated um, by ROS. As has been mentioned, uh, with this increase in basal ROS production is you get a compensatory enhancement of the antioxidant capacity. Uh, hydrogen peroxide itself stimulates NERF2 expression and activity. Uh, and we, as I mentioned earlier, you get NADPH and glutathione uh, synthesis as a byproduct of um, glycolytic metabolism. Additionally, this increase in antioxidant capacity is shown to confer chemoresistance, especially in cancer stem cells, which seem to exhibit an even greater antioxidant capacity compared to neighboring tumor cells. Um, however, this uh, balance between oxidative stress and antioxidant capacity is shown to be a therapeutic vulnerability. Uh, Greeny et al. depict that as a cancer becomes more aggressive, they become more susceptible to small modulations in oxidative stress, stress ultimately leading to cell death. Um, for instance, in our, the model we use, we show that with the addition of the antioxidant and acetylcysteine, you get a, a reduction in cell death Whereas if you add the glutathione in, uh, synthesis inhibitor, butionine, sulfoxamine, uh, you get an increase in cell death. Um, as such, with this therapeutic vulnerability, there have been a number of compounds, experimental compounds under, under development. Among those are ARQ501, which is a quinone derivative that stimulates ROS production, specifically in cells that overexpress NQ01. Uh, Alesclamol is a copper chelator that preferentially accumulates within the mitochondria due to its positive charge um, and rapidly induces reactive oxygen species production. Uh, finally, phenethyl uh, isothiocyanate um, disrupts the glutathione antioxidant system. It forms conjugates with reduced glutathione, uh, promoting its uh, export from the cell. This ultimately leads to an increase in oxidative stress. Um, our lab is interested in uh, another um, small molecule that is shown to uh, induce oxidative stress, that being dichloroacetate, or DCA. DCA is a pyruvate mimetic um, that is the inhibitor of pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase, which is responsible for the inhibitory phosphorylation of the PDH complex. Inhibition of PDK promotes glucose oxidation, therefore, uh, DCA is used clinically in the treatment of uh, mitochondrial disorders that are associated with lactic acidosis. And DCA is currently uh, under clinical investigation as an adjuvant to a number of chemotherapies um, as it further induces oxidative stress. Um, in the context of cancer, we see the inhibition of the PDH complex due to higher expression and activity of PDK. This ultimately leads to or helps facilitate the generation of lactate from pyruvate and, and the cytosol. Uh, whereas in the presence of DCA, you get inhibition of PDK, you get pyruvate flux to the mitochondria, increase in acetyl-CoA acetyl production, which is used in the TCA cycle. Uh, within the TCA cycle, you get the generation of reduction equivalents, which are then uh, oxidized by the protein components of the electron transport chain. Uh, associated with the generation of a membrane potential with the movement of protons across the membrane, ultimately leading to the generation of ATP. However, uh, again, in the context of cancer where we see mitochondrial uh, dysfunction, um, we see an inefficient transfer of electrons uh, between these complexes and the premature loss uh, of electrons, which interact with molecular oxygen to generate superoxide, which can then promote uh, protein oxidation, loss of membrane integrity, loss of the mitochondrial membrane potential, and ultimately de cell death. Um, our lab, as we've mentioned, uh, utilizes the uh, VMM3 model of metastatic cancer that was developed in Dr. Thomas Seafree's lab. Uh, it's derived from a spontaneous brain tumor that exhibits GBM pathology. Uh, it's syngenetic with the VMDK background, allowing us to use immunocompetent animals. Um, upon, uh, upon subcutaneous injection, uh, we see rapid systemic metastasis to a number of major organ systems. 
Um, and these cells have been transfected with firefly luciferase, which allows for the in vivo detection of tumor growth. Um, we show uh, with uh, four hour treatment of DCA at increasing concentrations, you see a loss of phosphorylated PDH. Uh, this is, we also see um, following 24 hour treatment in culture, the, uh, a reduction in lactate export, uh, suggestive of an increase in glucose oxidation. Uh, further evidence of that is an increase in Mitosox red fluorescence, which is an indicator of superoxide production. Excuse me. We see uh, that's concentration dependent. We see as we increase concentration of DCA, we see a significant um, increase in superoxide. This also corresponds um, with alterations to the mitochondrial membrane um, potential, utilizing uh, tetramethylrhodamine, which is an indicator of uh, membrane potential. We see at low millimolar concentrations, a slight hyperpolarization, uh, suggestive of increased flux to the electron transport chain. However, as we increase the concentration of BCA, we see a complete depolarization of uh, the membrane and loss of fluorescence. Um, this is associated with a concentration dependent increase in cytotoxicity with DCA. Um, Looking at uh, aminofluorescence for cytochrome C um, at a 12 hour treatment time point using just PBS, we see in our control cells um, diffuse uh, fluorescence uh, and diffuse localization of cytochrome C, which is indicative of a healthy uh, mitochondrial network. Um, however, at a concentration of 5 millimolar DCA, we see more punctate staining, which is indicative of. Um, Mem uh, mitochondrial uh, fractionation, um, and uh, if we increase that all the way up to 20 millimolar, we see complete release of cytochrome C indicative of cell death. Um, additionally, this cytotoxicity is modulated, excuse me, uh, with, uh, through uh, addition of the antioxidant and, uh, and endo N acetylcysteine, excuse me, uh, where we see ablation of this increase in cell death with DCA treatment, and we see a further enhancement of cytotoxicity with the addition of BSO. Uh, moving into the animal model, uh, we show with a 250 milligram per kilogram dose of DCA, uh, about a 79% increase in survival over our controls. Um, we see, this is associated with a reduction in tumor burden three weeks post-injection compared to our controls where we see systemic metastasis throughout the animal. Um, our DCA-treated animals uh, only show uh, tumor burden at the site of in injection. This is a, we also see, looking at uh, blood markers, uh, we see a significant reduction in blood lactate at one week, after one week of treatment. Um, we also see a significant reduction of blood glucose at that one week. Um, as I mentioned, DCA is being uh, studied clinically as an adjuvant to a number of chemotherapies. Our lab is interested in identifying a potential combination, um, uh, an agent to combine with DCA that is more non-toxic than traditional chemotherapy. And we have settled on metformin, which many, most of you are well aware, is a first-line therapy for type 2 diabetes. Uh, metformin increases insulin sensitivity. Uh, through the a reduction in systemic glucose and insulin. It also promotes insulin receptor function. Uh, it inhibits hepatic ne gluconeogenesis. Uh, it reduces inflammation through inhibition of the NF-kappa B pathway, sub subsequently leading to a decrease in uh, IL-1, 6, and TNF levels. Additionally, metformin is uh, under consideration as a therapy in uh, PCOS uh, for its ability to reduce systemic estrogen. Um, metformin enters the cell through the organic cation tr uh, transporter, and because of its positive charge, preferentially accumulates within the mitochondria. Uh, um, in 2000, Owen et al. Uh, uh, produced a paper in which they showed that metformin inhibits complex one. Um, a number of other groups have uh, been able to repeat uh, these findings, uh, is, is including uh, the Shandell group in Northwestern. Um, and we show 
evidence suggesting this is the case in which we see at low uh, micromolar concentrations of metformin after one hour treatment, we see uh, an increase in uh, superoxide production, um, we believe is indicative of a loss of efficient ETC activity. Um, however, if you increase this concentration, we see a significant reduction in, in ROS production, um, pot uh, potentially indicating a compensatory uh, mechanism. Um, again, we look at mem uh, mitochondrial membrane potential. We show uh, with low uh, micromolar concentration, we see a slight hyperpolarization, again, potentially indicating increased flux to the electron transport chain. Um, however, we see a gradual depolarization as we increase the concentration. Um, as Dr. Champ mentioned, metformin is well known for its ability to activate AMP kinase. Uh, the inhibition of complex one likely leads to a uh, reduction in ATP production. Subsequent, subsequently, you get an increase in the AMP to ATP ratio, which is sensed by AMP kinase, allowing it to be phosphorylated by LKB1. Um, and it's act leading to its activation. Uh, activated AMP kinase promotes uh, glycolysis, fatty acid oxidation, and also inhibition of mTOR. This ultimately leads to diminished proliferation and tumor growth, um, which is something we show in culture where uh, we see with one millimolar metformin uh, a blunting of uh, VMM3 proliferation. In the presence of abundant glucose, uh, this compensatory activation of AMP kinase leads to restoration of ATP levels as well as abundant lactate production, uh, which is something we also show uh, following 24-hour treatment. We see a significant increase in the amount of lactate in culture. Um, however, unlike with DCA, we do not see any uh, cytotoxicity with metformin treatment. Uh, moving again back into our animal model uh, with a 250 milligram per kilogram dose of metformin, we see a 100% uh, increase or we double the survival time of our animals compared to control. This is again associated with a reduction in tumor burden at three weeks. And looking at our blood markers, we see a slight increase towards uh, lactate or increase in blood lactate. Uh, which is kind of follows with what uh, with metformin's mechanism mechanism of action, and we also see the hallmark reduction in blood glucose. Um, moving into uh, our my data, looking at the combination, we show that DCA uh, partially um, blunts the significant increase in lactate production over controls, um, as well as uh, further. Uh, enhancement of oxidative stress with the combination compared to both agents alone. Um, this corresponds with uh, metformin enhancement of DCA cytotoxicity. However, we do not see uh, this enhancement when we combine DCA with the AMP kinase activator ICAR, suggesting that any sort of um, enhancement of DCA activity is likely independent of the activation of AMP kinase. Um, as such, as we increase the concentration of metformin, we further enhance DCA cytotoxicity. Um, unfortunately, to this point, we have not sh been able to show a further enhancement of survival with a combination of our agents. Um, we still see a sig signif rather significant increase in survival. Uh, it just doesn't differ from single treatments. However, we still, we, with the combination, see a, a reduction um, a slight reduction in blood lactate at one week. And again, we see this reduction in blood glucose. Um, in summary, uh, there's definitely efficacy in targeting cancer metabolism, both dietarily, which is the focus of this meeting, as well as with uh, p potential small molecule inhibitors. Uh, cancer is certainly vulnerable to perturbations in redox balance. Um, and we have shown that DCA induces oxidative stress and BMM3 cell death and that metformin enhances DCA cytotoxicity possibly through diminishing uh, efficiency of the electron transport chain. Uh, I certainly would like to thank my mentor, Dr. Diagostino, and the rest of our lab, as well as our support from Cyvation. And I'd be happy to take any questions if you have them. Uh, I, I don't want to be too critical, but have you
you seen the Angios uh, clinical trial just failed and their stocks are down? Uh, they were? I looked. Once, well, you mentioned that yesterday, and I took a look, uh, but they're still technically recruiting for a number of other trials. I'm, I'm just trying to understand what, what kind of, uh, um, and I don't want to be critical. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm totally in this kind of idea, but what FGO is doing is just some kind of a genomic uh, baseball gizmo. I mean, I, I truly, uh, this uh, isocitrate dehydrogen is the gene itself is not responsible for the metabolic defect. That's what the clinical trial shows. Animal models are probably fantastic, but the truth is you have to approach this data in, in a very critical sense because obviously these drug failures, targeted drug failures that are actually now countless almost, they actually, that's what we see consistently. And, and you need to, um, kind of find some kind of a common ground, what is metabolic and what is genomic. Genomic is probably not going to be effective as, as we saw so many uh, failures. The other question is, the lact lactate dehydrogenase, it's <clears throat> the enzyme it has, it itself has such a low control coefficient that uh, it's like 0.15. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually one of the least control coefficients you know, it's the least radiating enzymes in the glycolysis. Why is it a good drug talk? I mean, you need to talk to biochemists before you, you get into these trials because that's how you set yourself up to a clinical failure, which Agios just showed so, you know, impressive. Uh, I'm certainly not advocating for their, their drug. Uh, I simply was just highlighting the, uh, a few of the small molecule inhibitors that are being developed. Um, and I myself am not looking at LDH as a drug target. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you had mentioned TNF alpha, IL-6, and IL-1 are reduced by metformin. Mm -hmm. Those are all main cytokines associated with cachexia. Have you seen anything with metformin and any ways to be more inflammatory? treatment? Um, most of the studies that are, have been, or most of the literature that's been published on metformin is mostly um, looking at its effect in reducing um, incidence in type 2 diabetic patients in regards to a number of uh, um, cancers. And specifically, I haven't seen anything looking at the effect of metformin on cachexia. But if, if a lot of people in this room believe, including myself, that cancer cells have faulty mitochondria, what's the mechanism by causing mitochondrial dysfunction would improve outcomes or mitochondrial toxins? Uh, so um, I myself uh, believe that there is mitochondrial dysfunction um, within cancer, but I don't believe that it's complete. Lot, la, uh, a lack of mitochondrial function. Obviously, you, I don't believe you would see the activation of AMP kinase um, in cancer cells with, the, with metformin treatment if there wasn't some basal um, electron transport. Otherwise, there wouldn't be an effect, a further effect on ATP levels in order to activate the enzyme. Um, I certainly think that metformin uh, efficacy will be dependent on the extent of mitochondrial dysfunction within a particular cancer. Um, but I think that there is still some basal activity, though it's certainly not anywhere near a normal cell. <laughs>